Okay, we're back here live in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is the Cube Silicon Angle and Wikibon's flagship program. We've got the men's instructor soon from the noise. Go to siliconangle.com. That's the reference point for tech innovation. You'll, feel, you'll see all the stories in tech from Apple to Android to HP to IBM to NetApp to all the enterprise customers, Amazon. We cover the cloud, mobile, and social. First blog to do that since 2009. The only blog doing it in 2009 and the first one to cover that. I'm John Furrier, the founder. I'm joined Jeff Frick. And our next guest is Bruce Trevarthen. Trevathan, Trevathan right. got it. Managing Director of the Cloud.net.nz. The Cloud.net.nz, your company. Welcome to the Cube. Thanks very much for having me. So this is the Cube. So you know, this is where we get all kind of we talk tech. So let's talk about cloud infrastructure as a service and HP. So first, introduce your company get into specifics. Sure, so uh, the cloud is an infrastructure as a service provider uh, built in New Zealand for New Zealand companies. So any service we take to market has a very in-country flavor to it. Uh, naturally, you can buy uh, cloud services globally now. So the, the key for us was around automation and uh, in-country uh, nature of those services. And uh, we, we developed that in 2008, uh, early 2008. We've been evolving it ever since. And uh, it's going really well. It's, it's certainly uh, growing at a, at a rate quicker than we anticipated. And uh, the technology platform um, eases the pain of that rate of growth. So just take us through what's changed since 2008 to now. In terms of like good stuff, like automation, because configuration management in the cloud has evolved, right? Little things. So what are the big, what are the things that you can point to and say since 08 to here were big improvements in game changing? Some of the big game changes, well, First and foremost, uh, at the, the cornerstone of the environments, and we have three discrete uh, production environments in, in the three major cities of the North Island, and uh, the cornerstone of each of those environments is the storage array, the storage network. And uh, initially that was uh, on a fairly monolithic uh, technology that, that scaled okay, but didn't really provide us with any flexibility or any um, differentiation when it comes to actually uh, taking that storage to market as a product. So the HP uh, 3 pass store serve product um, slotted in there pretty well like a glove uh, and gave us not only that tier one resilience uh, in terms of the, the architecture there, but also um, with the uh, with the different tiers of storage and the way you can carve them up and deliver them out as a as a very specific level of service, uh, that meant that from this one um, storage technology, uh, we could actually deliver all of our storage requirements uh, under this one management or one technology umbrella. So it certainly reduced our overhead and gave us the ability to then scale without having to to maintain and manage uh, all of these disparate sort of technologies. So when when you talk about the cloud, we hear a lot from HP about bursting. What does that mean for folks out there that are trying to figure that out? Because you know, as customers, they want to have some SLA user experiences, experiences that they're consistent. I mean, Amazon has great elastic cloud and great resources, good stack. I mean, we use a lot for our stuff, but it could be lumpy. So what have you found from customers in dealing with HP in particular with this bursting? So bursting's pretty new for us. Uh, we are currently working with HP on that. Um, the beauty of that, uh, again, it does come back to the, to the three power and, and some of the converged uh, technologies, converged um, uh, convergence of the technologies up in the compute stack as well. But back, and I've just touched on what we did back in 2008. So we had to build our own orchestration and billing engines because there wasn't any kind of cloud system matrix back then. Uh, thankfully now there is, yeah. and that's certainly that's hard, uh, that's hard software to write. It's hard software to write, you know, we, we had to develop that, we had to keep evolving it, and, and there's a finite limit, and I, you know, I'll, I'll say so myself, to how far we can push that before you have to adopt something like an enterprise up, uh, out of the box uh, product. Um, but so we're working with HP through that now, and regarding bursting, uh, I'm a little more comfortable with that concept commercially from the point of view that HP run the same stack as us anyway. So if we burst to HP, it's on 3 power. It's on Gen 8 servers. You know, it's on that same that same physical infrastructure, uh, and therefore performance. And the constraints or the caveats around that performance to make sure that the multi-tenancy um, uh, aspect of delivering cloud is not uh, uh, to the detriment of any other multi multi-tenant customers. That's going to be the same on HP's cloud. So uh, quite comfortable with that burstability. So Bruce, talk a little bit about again. 2008's a while ago, so you were kind of at, at the beginning of this beginning of the show, how the customer uh, app selection and process for putting stuff at your facility has changed over that time, and what does it look like going forward? So we, uh, and again, we've got a, it's a, it's a New Zealand-centric, uh, right. I guess, approach to this, um, but we are a nation of early adopters. So ultimately, uh, in 2008, we saw the need to commoditize the, the tin that was on-premise. 
And uh, so what customers were doing is the customer understood two CPU and they understood four gig of RAM and they understood a terabyte of disk. Um, so if they were going to go along to a website and buy medium, you know, what does that mean? And then they have to architect their solution to adhere to the constraints of medium. What does that mean? So uh, we felt that certainly back then, and I'll, and I'll come to why it's changing, but we, we felt back then that customers needed to consume what they understood. And so we had to sell CPU, RAM, and disk. And then we can add some uh, resilience and some, and some other uh, enterprise elements around the outside. But so shift forward five years to now, um, and now what we're seeing is less concern about CPU, less concern about the RAM, less concern about the amount of disk, and basically, here's my workload, make it go. And by the way, make it go in these two locations and, and keep, keep that one uh, up to date so that if this one fails, I can turn it on. Um, and that's really the, the shift, and, and I think a so lot So how are they measuring that now if they're not measuring it by the metrics that you kind of started out with? So, and a, this is the whole industry in itself, right? You've got <laughs> companies like New Relic who actually, the, their entire model is around being able to measure the entire experience from the database interaction through the stack out to the end user. Um, if you, and you can measure that uh, right, right down to per user now. So that, that's the measurement. You don't no longer have to worry about uh, am I using 90% of my CPU or is my RAM ballooning or you know, is my disk latency going up. It, it, that's just no longer really a concern for the actual customer deploying their workload. Uh, but I think the reason, main reason for that shift is that software doesn't last forever. Um, and it has to evolve and often it gets rewritten from scratch. And more and more now when software gets rewritten from scratch, it's written in a cloud way. So they're, they're writing it to actually make use of things like Amazon Beanstalk or a computing environment that will scale, uh, but not necessarily uh, in a traditional sense. Interesting. So what do you see as the biggest challenge Amazon has in the enterprise? Because a lot of people have, are using Amazon yeah. for shadow IT. And, we're, I mean, we're at HP Show, but I'm just going to say it. I mean, we are big fans of Amazon. We think they're doing awesome. They have great commoditization of infrastructure as a service. They pump out new stuff all the time. RDS, Elastic Bean, uh, Stock is fantastic. Tight, fast. But not SLA oriented. No. They're just moving so fast. Um, what it's do you very think? innovative though, right? Oh, I mean, they, they, well, it's disruptively innovative. Yeah. One, they're commoditizing a market called infrastructure. Just driving and prices on down, top down, of down. It, commoditization, they're innovating. You don't see that very often in our business, so it's exciting to, to watch. Well, the question is, is that, you know, what, where are they going with that? Enterprise is a different ballgame. Yeah. OpenStack has gotten a lot of traction because it's just flexible. It's like a warm blanket for an enterprise. Yeah. What, what's your take on, on that dynamic, the so, hard charging Amazon and the warm yeah, cuddle look, of OpenStack for the enterprise. No, uh, you know, Amazon have inertia as well. They, you know, there's no, there's a, I wouldn't call them a juggernaut, but there's no stopping them. Um, <laughs> so recently, obviously, Amazon are now in, in Australia, so that makes them an Australasian player, uh, which affects New Zealand. Uh, but so when we take our products and services to market, there's a, there's a big in-country message there, and so. Um, Amazon ultimately, I wouldn't want them to go away. They're innovating, which gives us ideas. They're also driving the price down and commoditizing it to the nth degree, which means that we have to come up with new innovative ways ourselves to achieve the same capability in country at a different scale. Um, and when it comes to enterprise and, and, and SLAs, um, look, I, I think I get tool, tool for the job tends to be the approach. And Amazon absolutely fits certain workloads. You know, we have customers who would quite happily put um, archival data on Amazon because for a cent a gig, why wouldn't you? Um, and then we have customers who actually need that data on the end of a 10 gig fiber link. Well, they're not going to get <coughs> 10 gig to Amazon for anything, any kind of cost effective price from New Zealand. So, uh, tool for the job. And I think Amazon, um, they belong in the toolbox. They, there's a place for that. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff, what's your take on Amazon? given your OpenStack uh, of co-hosting at theCUBE. Yeah, and also at, at, at AWS Summit. I mean, I, I, I think this relentless relentless innovation and relentless drive on pricing and relentless delivering value has been very powerful. And, I, and it's like my whole carrot stick thing. You know, Had they not done that, uh, had Amazon not delivered those services and the adoption been what it is, you know, I don't know that we, were, where we, we would be where we are today in terms of the speed of adoption of the cloud. So clearly they are, you know, they're driving out front. But I'm curious to talk, talk a lot of it about globalization, and I know, and moving data is hard, and moving data across large uh, geographies, days. right? Is it's, it's real time. It takes real time, even at the speed of light. It takes time to move data. So, talk a little bit about, you know, kind of your focus on, on going um, very local, and and what's kind of the impact of the globalization that you see, in, 
we have to have these data centers all over the place. I mean, we're going to have to have the data distributed all over the place. And that's the same in country. You know, we have Auckland, Hamilton, Wellington. Uh, we don't just have one. We have three. Um, not only because we need the resilience of, of being able to fail over between them, but also because a, a customer with an office in Wellington uh, and a branch in Auckland, say, um, they wouldn't necessarily want to have their workload where they have the most people, for example. So there's no point um, hosting in Auckland if all of your people are in Wellington, because if, if you lose that connection to Auckland, it's as good as losing the connection to the internet, totally. Yeah. Um, so regionalization of latency sensitive or uh, high volume data services uh, is important, because uh, in international um, bandwidth is expensive, and certainly from New Zealand it's, it's uh, expensive to the point that it's, it's simply not freely available um, right down at the end user level. Uh, it's cost prohibitive. And so uh, regionalization it plays a role, and I think you can then scale that up to the world. So then you have to have your actual um, platforms uh, regionalized. And I think we're seeing that with Xero now in Australia as well, Amazon in Australia. And whereas previously they were just in, for example, uh, Microsoft uh, Azure was in uh, Singapore and Hong Kong. And so for them to push into an into a Australasian market, seem a little niche, but ultimately they're not, they're not getting the market penetration by being only in, in four sites in the world because people actually want that workload closer to the high-speed networks. Yeah. Bruce, thanks for coming inside the cube. We got our next guest coming up. Um, thanks, this sir. is, uh, congratulations, Down Under in New Zealand, taking care of the cloud business down there and uh, being a, an owner of your own business, uh, good luck and has been a good ride. Thank you, it's good, yeah, it's great fun. Yeah, yeah. Keep doing it while it's fun, you know. <laughs> you know, being your own boss is good because no one can fire you unless you're out of business. So, <laughs> you know, that's what I always say, don't go out of business. That's true, you know, that's true. Thanks we, for having me. As we say to all the startups in Silicon Valley, you can't go out of business if you have money in the bank. That's right. So, you know, I hope this is good. Thanks for coming on theCUBE to share your perspective. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube. We'll be right back after this short break with more action. Day one of HP Discover, three days, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We have the next keynote coming up at four o'clock. Stay tuned, we'll be right back after this short break.